So uh, I hope you're uh, get the hang of this whole system with uh, very simply setting up div tags, putting in content, creating rules, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Every site has the same foundation. So if you can create this site, you can basically create any site using these simple, simple time-tested techniques. So let's move forward here. Okay, let's take this file here. Also, I just want to say my uh, my subscribe speech. So please subscribe. If you haven't subscribed already, you should subscribe. Like my videos, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So let's go to the file and you file save as. And of course, let's call this version seven, version eight. Okay. Now, what I want to do here? A few things. Okay. I want to basically space the paragraph. Desktop publishing is known as letting. Okay, so we're going to change the spacing between the paragraphs, but I only want to change the spacing for paragraphs for this particular paragraph inside of the main content. So how do I do that? Okay, so I select the tag. Select the tag. Make a rule make a, for the selected tag. So in this particular case, we're going to change the tag, the P tag, the main content. So we're going to say line height. Line height is the height of the line. Each line, the desktop publishing is known as lighting. So we're going to change this to 1.7 M spaces. Hit the apply option. So you can see that there's more space between the lines per paragraph. Now that's a little too much, so let's make this 1.45 M spaces. Okay, or let's make that 1.55. Okay, make a change, save a change. All right, now pop quiz here. All right, here's what I'd like to do. I want to stylize this paragraph differently from the other paragraphs. So say as an example, this is the title of my section for this main content. So I have a header tag. Everything else is an H2 tag. So I like to do two things. I want to make this paragraph both, and I want to indent, but just this P for paragraph. This paragraph. Now understand something. This is a P. This is a P. This is a P, etc., etc. So they're the same paragraph tag. So how do I talk to this paragraph tag separate from the other paragraph tags? The same way I talk to my div tag, I D I D the tags. So I select the tag, and I'm going to call that what it is, which is simply first paragraph. I'm going to type in F I R S T P A R A, turn key. Okay. So now this has a tag. I tag this ID with first paragraph, so watch what I can do. So I can come here and I can say new CSS rule. New CSS rule. So first paragraph when first paragraph is inside of main content. So we're going to do a couple things here. So let's make, just because we can, let's emphasize this paragraph by making it bold. So I bought that. Okay. Now let's go to block, block well, category, indent. We indent the first line of the paragraph by two M spaces. The plot option. So now this paragraph and only this paragraph will be affected because I ID the paragraph with an ID tag. So we're going to take this information should go inside any content. So P for paragraph, first paragraph. Okay. Make a change, say it, save a change. So I just want to share with you that you can ID any HTML tag. You can ID a div tag, ID an H1 tag, ID a paragraph tag, ID an image tag, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, now the exciting part, the exciting part here. We're going to create a navigation system. So before we do, I just want to share with you, if we go to... Firefox for a second, and if we go back to Yahoo. So, very important step. This is something that you can do inside of Firefox that you can't do in some of the other browsers. Okay, 
So under view, we're going to say page style off. This is going to strip the CSS. So very important step. And that navigation system, a navigation system is inside of an unordered list here. This is an unordered list here. This is an unordered list. All the navigation tags with the exception of, scroll down here. Boy, these are a lot of navigation tags. Okay, this is an ordered list. This is an ordered list. So I have two different types of list. Unordered list and ordered list. Let's go back to view, page style, basic style. So as an example, these are different hyperlinks. These are hyperlinks. These are hyperlinks. These are hyperlinks. All the hyperlinks, as in links with an S, meaning more than one link, is inside of an unordered list. The exception to that is an ordered list. Ordered list has numbers next to it. So if you'd have a website with, say, your favorite cheesecake recipes, you'd have one, two, three, four, five. That's an ordered list. O L, ordered list. Tag, unordered list, UL. These are unordered list by, by default. List constitutes more than one, hence the word list. So back in Dreamweaver, we're going to click right here on SiteNav. We're going to put the four pages that create the website. So pay close attention to this. We're going to type in lowercase, lowercase about, return. Lowercase products, return key, price, return key, and contact. Now, very important step. By default, these are four paragraphs. If you go to the code, you'll see that these are four paragraphs. We're going to change this to an unordered list inside the site nav. So the simplest, simplest, simplest way to do this is in order to affect the paragraphs we need to select the paragraphs. In the property palette, there's two icons down here. This icon is for an unordered list. This icon represents an ordered list. Ordered list has numbers next to it. Unordered list has dots next to it. Now, we want neither, but by default, we want to have an unordered list. We can select this. Okay. So I selected the paragraphs first and then select unordered list icon. Now that created the UL tag, unordered list tag. Okay, so if you look at your code for a second, you will see that this content, which was once a paragraph, is now part of a UL, unordered list. If this was an ordered list, this would say OL. Okay, so we're going to do a few things here. Incidentally, LI stands for list item. List item inside unordered list. Okay, so we're going to select this tag. We're going to select the unordered list tag. We're going to create a rule for the unordered list tag. So select the tag, select the tag, and make a rule. Select the tag, make a rule. Now, we could, we could create an unordered list for the entire site by doing this. Because we can have, just like the Yahoo site, had different unordered lists, top, bottom, left, right. But we want to be specific for site nav. We're going to create an unordered list specifically for site nav. So we're going to hit OK. Okay. So based on these choices, these are my choices, I'm going to go to category list and change my list type to none. As an example, I can change my list type to squares instead of circles or disks, or I can import a graphic. We're going to change this to none. I don't want to have dots. So unordered list tag, unordered list rule for the selected tag. The list is going to be set to none. Okay, make a change, save a change. Those dots are now gone. Okay, so if I click here, this is unordered list. This is the list item. Wherever my cursor is represents the list item. We're not going to deal with that. Okay. Now, very important step. Now we're going to create hyperlinks. 
similar to the hyperlink we created before by basically putting a dummy placeholder hyperlink. So a very important step here. We're not ready to go to an actual page because the client has to approve the design, the content, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we're just going to put placeholder hyperlinks. How do we do that? We double click the word, double click. Now, why do I double click? Because that's certainly, if you click, you can get more or less of that text. I just want to double click and get that whole word down here to the property palette, and we're going to type it in the pound symbol. That's going to set this, set this as a hyperlink. That creates the A tag. A tag stands for anchor. Anchors the hyperlink. Double click. Put in the pound symbol. Turn key. Oh, some other pound symbol got up there. So put in the pound symbol. Double click. I come down to the property palette. Put in the pound symbol again. Very important step here. I'm not going to real life pages yet. We're not at that point. We're simply we're simply specifying this selected content to be a hyperlink. Okay, so now they're hyperlinks. Now, if you want to look at the code for a second, you'll see that a anchor refers h reference HTML referencing. Right now, the a tag is referencing the pound symbol. Now, eventually, it's going to reference the about page. And the products page, and the price page, and the contact page. But we're not there yet. Okay, we're still in design mode. We're still designing a site from scratch. Okay, incidentally, over here to the right, let's do some housekeeping. Unordered list appears after site nav. Site nav, unordered list. Make a change, save a change. News bar, the whole news bar section should appear after main content. Okay, so basically you want to set this up so it changes. This should flow exactly the creation of your document, exactly how your document was built. It's how the CSS rules should flow. Because quite simply, you don't want to have a site where you say, well, this client puts their body tag at the bottom and this client puts their wrapper tag at the top, et cetera, et cetera. You want to come up with a system that works just for you. Okay. So this flows exactly how the, the CSS was created, exactly how the div tags were created. Everything else has a hierarchy to it. So it's a very important step. Okay. So now I'm going to show you a simple way to format this. So we're going to create some boxes. We're going to put this text inside of boxes. We're going to choose the opposite color of this orange and put it inside of a box, 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 one for each and make the text upper or initial cap, capital A, capital P, capital P, and let's make the type white and put it inside of a contrasting color to this box. So pay close attention to this. Now, for those of you that have struggled with this before and you're thinking, well, that's why I go to Photoshop or a graphics program to make these. First of all, search engine optimization. You should not use graphics for hyperlinks. You should use text because text is searchable. I'm going to select the tag, select the A tag, select the A tag, and make a rule. Make a rule for the selected tag. Okay, so we're going to say specifically for site nav inside the unordered list, inside of list item, and the A tag. We're simply going to hit OK. Now, a couple things here. First of all, we're going to make this capitalized. Now, understand, I intentionally did not write this capitalized. But if you do, you're married to it. Eventually, in a next video, in a subsequent video, we're going to link these to real life pages. So we can just copy and paste that to the link dialog box down here. So we're going to make this capitalized. And we don't want to have the underlines circa 1995. So we're going to say underline none. So right now, this is the hyperlinks. Now, we want the type to be white. So we're going to change it to white. Now, hopefully you understand at this point, if at the apply option, the hyperlinks disappear because you can't see white on white. Now I'm going to go to the background color, the category background, and I'm going to change this color to the same color. Now, by default, it samples the same color, but what I want to do, because I'm working on a Macintosh, I can just go to my color wheel. So if this is where the color lives, then this is the color's opposite. So we're going to make this 
opposite color, a little bit different color here, a little bit opposite lighter color of that orange. So now, very important step. If I hit the apply option, it's kind of not doing what I expect it was going to do. What I wanted to have is four separate boxes. Now, this is the bane of most people's frustration. This is why most people go running to Photoshop, or running to a program to create the graphics, because they weren't taught the correct way. I want to make these hyperlinks four separate boxes. Here's the problem. By default, these are not line, these are not block of type. These are four lines of type. So Dreamweaver is doing exactly what it's supposed to do because this is defaulting to a line of type. We want this to default to a block of type. So we display this category block, block display. Right now by default, it's displaying as a line of type. This is what it's defaulting to. So therefore, that's incorrect. I want to have four separate boxes. So how do I do that? Category block, block display, display as a block of type. Problem solved. So now if I hit the apply option, there's my four boxes. Now for those of you that have been running into Photoshop to do this or a graphics program, that's incorrect. This is how it's done professionally. Now, nothing we want to do here is similar to the footer. We want to put the type vertically in the center, vertically top and bottom center. So how can I do that? I'm going to go to my type category, category type, and change the line height to, let's make the line height be 35 pixels high. That's going to vertically top and bottom, put the type in the center, vertically top and bottom in the center of the box. Pretty cool. Now if you change it inside so your box category, that's going to really mess us up because then I have to play games with padding. If it's a single line of type, we can just go 35 pixels and high for line height. Okay. Now, let's go to box and set box to the left. Left. Let's make this left. Eight pixels to the left. The apply option. So now it pulls it a little from the left. Now, I want to separate these boxes. So how do I do that? Well, margin space. Margin space at the bottom, the bottom of the box. So, space at the bottom. Bottom, let's make this bottom 12 pixels. So if I the apply option, there is space at the bottom of the box. How cool is that? Make a change, save a change, make a change, save a change. Okay, now for the last thing, want to move this up to the top here and want to stylize this type with a hover tag. We'll do that in the next video. I got to create some suspense here, guys. So the hover tag is like a helicopter hover. When the mouse hovers over, we're going to change that to a contrasting color. We'll do that next. Again, please subscribe, like, comment my videos.